Hey everybody and welcome. Certainly glad you could join me today. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about cameras. Before I get started, a massive thank you to everyone who subscribed and hit the notification icon. It's very helpful to me to be able to see how many people want to see my content and it also helps the channel grow, which is obviously awesome. Also a massive thank you to my patrons and my members. Your names will be running across the bottom of the screen as we speak. Your support is amazing. Thank you ever so much. Okay, let's jump into this then. So we're going to click on the create a new camera icon like this, and we're just going to leave it all as default. And you can save this as a scene subset if you want to. So you could set up a camera how you liked, save it as a scene subset, and then you can just drag it into your scene when you want to reuse it. So obviously in the general tab, you've got all of your similar translations, as well as having your we expand that a bit so you've got your transforms there and then in misc you've got point out so you can just tell your camera to point out a specific object in the scene if you want to now when we come into display we're actually going to come back to this tab in a moment because some of the stuff in here isn't going to make any sense until we've progressed through so if we just click on the camera now turning perspective on and off allows you to switch between orthographic and perspective views by which I mean the you're essentially turning off the perspective so if we should jump into this this is the best thing to do if we click on front if you turn perspective off you're now seeing a 100% plan view from this side and you can't actually rotate around if you click and drag on the cube it won't move because you're seeing a, a plan view or a front view for one of a better way of putting it with no perspective so something that's 100 meters away will appear the same size in this view as something that's two meters away. So we don't really want to do that. We'll leave it in perspective mode like so. Frame width, you're never ever going to want to play with. Personally, I always lock that so that I don't accidentally change it because when you're dealing with camera lenses, you always deal in focal length. And generally speaking, if you're doing portraits, you're going to be looking at the range between 35 and 105 millimeters um, and the kind of standard in the photographic world is 85 millimeters for a portrait lens and of course if you're taking portraits you're going to want to turn your depth of field on now then if we jump back into perspective view and we get a side view of what's happening here you can see our cameras here and we've got this little ball surrounded by uh, it looks like a little tie fighter there and all this this front one here with the diagonal X across it, all that is indicating to you is what your frame currently looks like, your field of view. And you can always change that in the uh, display view, which we're gonna change some of the properties for in a minute. And then this one that looks like two pluses inside, that indicates your focal distance. And if we drag in the slider up and down, you can see that it changes what's in focus so essentially if there's an object here it would be in focus and then it would come out of focus like that and the reason this is important is that when a camera is photographing the bokeh or the blur of things that are out of focus is actually greater depending on how far away from the focal distance that it actually is so if we had an object exactly in focus here an object here would be slightly out of focus, an object here would be even more out of focus, and so on in both directions. And the f-stop in photography indicates how wide the aperture of the lens is, but essentially it just means how much or how, how large your focal range is. So obviously here you're going to have an awful lot more in focus, and it also means that the amount of blur that's applied to objects depending on how far away they are is dramatically changed by how big the or small the f-stop is so and again kind of f8 is a popular size for portraiture but you can come right down to probably the, the smallest that most cameras will do is f1.2 which as you can see on an 85 millimeter lens is a really really narrow slice so you can get some really like deep sort of soft portraits just by shooting that so if we bring this back up again we're now going to come back into our display like this 
and now what we can see is the field of view color is currently white but we can change that if we want to by clicking on the color there let's say we wanted to make it a blue there we go so now the field of view is blue it makes it a little harder to see in this scene but you can change it to whatever color you want now, i don't generally play with that i normally leave that uh, completely white but what i do play with normally is the depth of field playing colors and i normally change that to green all it does it just makes it a little easier to differentiate between um, the depth of field planes and the field of view planes if you're dealing with a subject that's fairly close to the camera now yes you could always just move that further away so if you wanted to do that you could say your field of view length and you could just up that you could make that considerably larger and then it's not going to be in the way of your view as you can see it's all the way down there but obviously this is a personal preference i would recommend dragging it up and down depending on where you are and what the scene is because obviously that can be quite annoying if you're selecting the camera and it's in the way so the next thing we're going to quickly jump down to the lens and this is where we can set some technical specs now to be completely honest these specs are quite difficult to get hold of for the kind of lenses that you're going to be want to be mimicking but they also have very very little effect much like a lot of things in daz they're there almost as a placebo to kind of make you feel like you're accomplishing something different when you're actually not the only thing that's really going to make a huge amount of difference in this is your stereo offset which is going to change your uh, chromatic aberrations and your lens distortion type. You could change it to spherical, which we've used in a previous video to create HDRIs. But for most of the time, you're never really going to want to touch anything in this because it doesn't really affect that much. But let's just say we were going to mess around with the stereo offset. You'd see some blue and purple, so green and purple fringes around your image, but you know, you can add that if you want but it's not going to make your images look considerably better so blades now this is something you can generally find out about most cameras certainly the aperture number of blades for example the 85 millimeter canon lens i believe has maybe 10 or 12 blades and that does have a slight effect on the quality of the blur in the background when you're working with depth of field so that's always worth having a bit of a tinker with experimenting with now the reason i'm not putting examples up for any of this stuff is because if i was to do a render for every single example every single thing that i'm talking about here it would take me about three days to make this video <laughs> and um, nobody wants to sit through that so now we're going to come into dimensions now what you can do is you can set your overall render settings so that every camera renders in the same resolution in your render settings and your general tab like this but what you can also do is you can have different cameras having different sizes so if you would hit on there you can see that immediately the field of view changed slightly and that's because it's gone to 1800 by 1200 now three by two is the standard resolution ratio for a dslr although if we were talking about the number of actual pixels for a real DSLR, you'd be looking about 6720 by 4480, which is pretty huge. Even on a good GPU, that's going to take a while to render because that's a massive, massive image. And you're never going to be able to display that whole thing on a standard monitor. Certainly not until we get up to like 4K displays anyway which is a bit of a way off. And I'm guessing that most of you aren't looking to um, display your images at full resolution. You're probably going to be doing manual oversampling, so you don't need to do that. But yeah, three by two is your standard DSLR ratio. Obviously, if you're using a full frame um, camera, then the ratio is going to be slightly different and you can always Google um, full frame resolutions and all that sort of thing so this is really the thing that they're, they're trying to sell you they're saying that they've got the exact correct pixel size and aspect ratios and things like that it's just honestly don't fall for it you can do this yourself just put three and two in your aspect ratio set whatever pixel size you want your image to be and you're good to go really all you want to be doing is playing in your camera change your focal length to 
an appropriate camera focal length, switch your, your depth of field on and you're good to go. And just remember, always turn your headlamp off. <laughs> There's never a good reason to have your camera headlamp on. That's really all there is to it in the cameras. You can tweak some of these sort of values and have a bit of a play with them. But honestly, don't waste your money in that studio store, not on something like this. You can set up these camera presets yourself so easily and then you can always save them. So we could change the name of this camera to, let's just say 85 millimeter like that. And then you can go into your content library and you can select your, I don't know, whatever directory you want, like so, whatever. And then you can just do save as scene subset and you can save this camera and then you'll be able to drag it in and out of your scenes as you see fit. I hope you found this video useful. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Keep those likes coming. If you haven't yet subscribed, get on it and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, bye-bye.